Tight one from second. Tight Coonis. Hines at tight. What a brilliant man. Great to see her bounce back after what happened last year. Welcome to this week's edition of the Final Gallop. It is episode 226 and is proudly supported by the Brisbane Airport Hotels Group. Another group one on Saturday for our stable with Baller ready to rip in the new market handicap at Flemington and also we have four accepted home here at Eagle Farm. Morning Tony, uh, as we do. Firstly let's look back at last Saturday and a wonderful performance by All That Pizzazz winning the cutest jewel prelude and, and qualifying for the $500,000 three year old race next week. Yeah, good morning Clegg, good morning everyone. Uh, he was really good, All That Pizzazz. We made a decision in the summer with him. I just wasn't totally happy the way that he'd come up and the way that he was racing. I knew there was more there. And, so we backed off him for this time of the year. He was great straight away. He lobbed into that beautiful spot where we yeah. thought we would just behind the speed and he was really good to the line. First go at Eagle Farm, he was terrific. So hopefully now onwards and upwards to, to the final in two weeks at Dooman, home track, 1200, far better suited than what the thousand was the other day. And I think the group in him has a lot to, lot to be excited about yeah. going forward in the next fortnight. He's a horse I particularly like. He's a, he's a little beauty. When he can just get that right run like the other day, just in behind a good speed, he's got a really good turn of foot. That's what we saw on Saturday, so well done to all the All That Pizzazz team. Absolutely. And a few big days at the English Premier Sale with our agent John Foote and yourself securing four quality yearlings. Yeah, we did. John does a good job at these sales, I must admit. I went down there all day Friday, looked at a bunch of yearlings, probably about 80-odd. 80, 80 um, and it, it's tough going, I said to him at the end of that day. It's, you must get very tired looking at horse after horse after yeah. horse every single we day. Blend in. Yeah, and at those types of sales, uh, like English Classic, even our March Cutest sale coming up and English Premier, he does a really good job you know, sorting out that whole bunch of horses down to a, to a nice list for me to have a look at when I get there. And uh, We've done well. I think we bought really well at the sale. We bought a couple of Spirit of Booms again, obviously some cuter sources, and we, we do like that stallion. So we bought a couple of nice cuter sources there, and we also purchased an exceeding Excel and a, and a really nice rich enough filly. So there, it was a good sale all around for us. Two colts, two girls, yep. heading back here to Queensland. And that's probably the number I sort of had in my mind that I would get from the sale. But, once again, John does an amazing job. I believe there's a few shares left in a couple of those horses from mm -hmm. there and still from Classic, so don't be afraid to jump in because they are selling really, really quickly, these yearlings. They are. And remember to head to our website at golanracing.com.au and click on Horses Available, uh, which will show you what we do have left in the horses and what opportunities there are. Okay, let's start our preview with Flemington on Saturday. The rail is in the four metre position. The track is currently rated a good four with mostly fine conditions for the week ahead. The rail was in the true position three weeks ago for the Black Caviar Lightning, now out to four metres. Where do you think the best uh, place to be will in the straight? <laughs> I've got no idea. I, I didn't think in the Lightning they'd go down to the fence, that's no. for sure. So I'm not sure. Look, uh, in. You, most races when they're big fields like this up the straight they go to the middle yeah they sort of go to the center then sort of find their spot and they can be spread right out so I, I would imagine they'll do that but look we got all day to have a look at some of the other races and see and for us we're we're, we're a bit sheepish really we sort of follow the follow the herd we're going to settle back in you know nice midfield position so mm -hmm. i'll be comfortable i do like where he's drawn i think it gives him a chance and to get out and get room something he didn't get in the lightning yeah. As you mentioned, he is in the Group 1 Newmarket Handicap over the 1200 metres. It is Race 7, a race Spirit of Boom came second in back in 2014. Baller will run this year at 55.5 kilos with Blake Shin on board, barrier 13 of 16. He's currently paying at $34 to win and $8 a place. He does love the Flem Flemington 1200 winning the Group 2 Bobby Lewis and placing in another two group races in the spring. Was first up was pretty solid in the, the Black Caviar Lightning over the 1000 metres but found it to be a little bit too sharp for him. Yeah, he did, particularly after stepping away slow then sort of going down in an area of the track what well, doesn't really suit him in amongst horses trying to weave between between runners um, I thought his first up run was a pass mark he's improved nicely off that out of the 1200 is going to help him more I think just gaining the right sort of run will help him hopefully just stepping away just finding that midfield position just on the back of a couple of horses and then just popping out and having plenty of room to run on we know he loves a straight it, there's a lot of talk this week about how strong a rendition of this new market is and I, I guess as we look on later on this year or later on this autumn we'll see we'll probably get a really good view of how strong this race is it's, mm -hmm. it's, it seems a very deep field as it always is it's the, really the premier sprint handicap in australia mm -hmm. really you don't get many you know many handicaps at, at this distance and certainly with this amount of quality for the amount of money they're racing for so it's a tough race yep. but he's in really good order one thing about melbourne um every time i ring up this week and talk to alex about this horse the weather keeps changing it was cold this morning and it's supposed to be a nice day there on saturday so hmm. 
Look, I think it's going to be a really good occasion. I'm sure the horse will race well. He absolutely loves that Flemington straight, and you'll see a big improvement off the Lightning. Okay. Now let's look at Eagle Farm on Saturday. The rail is currently in the six metre position. Uh, track is currently rated a good four with a very high chance of showers on Saturday. We found that it's only when it rains during the meeting that it gets rain affected though. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. The, the weather's a bit iffy. It's, it's just awfully muggy here yep. yesterday and today and we have had a little sprinkle already. There is, there is forecast of rain. I, I don't tend to worry when it's Eagle Farm. We know the drainage yep. this track has. And, I believe it's racing a little bit on the softer side actually. If you look at the sectionals of late, the last few meetings, they are getting into it a little bit. It's, it's, I'm finding a little bit, I think the jockeys are too, finding a little bit tough as to where the right part of the track is. They're getting off the fence early, then later in the day something's coming back up the inside. So whether that inside drying out as the meeting goes on, I'm not sure. Um, I think the bias at Eagle Farm, or perceived bias at Eagle Farm, has been a little bit tricky for people to follow. I'm not so sure that everyone's getting it right at the moment. Okay, we will start with race two, which is the class three plate over the 1600 metres. Tenzing will run in this 57 and a half kilos. Jimmy Orman will ride from barrier seven. He's currently paying six dollars to win and one dollar seventy for the place. He's a relative newcomer to our stable from New Zealand uh, in conjunction with Australian Bloodstock. It was a nice first up run for fifth, hitting the line strongly over the 13.50. Gets out to the mile now, which will suit him down to the ground. Yeah, he gets Jimmy Orman on out to a mile on a big track. I think that really suits him. Yeah. His first time our way going on a tighter track the other day, and they really run along. There was that day at Dooman where that, it was certainly an on-speed bias. The track got out to a, dried up to a good three and they were really hooking along in these races. And you could just see it had him out of his comfort zone. He was getting shoved off the track a bit earlier. He struggled then just to get on his right leg going around the corner. He wanted to lay in and he should have arguably finished much closer. He wouldn't have won the race, but he should have certainly finished closer right up on the place getters. So that's the right sort of run for this race. We always knew we had this race in mind, mm -hmm. a mile of the big track. He's probably gonna have to copy his medicine again from the gate or will probably just go back and he'll just look to get on the back of the right horses, balance him up. I think you'll see a much straighter performance. You'll see a really good turn of foot at the end of this mile. Okay. Moving on to race five, it is the open handicap over 1,000 metres. Proper Rogue runs 58 kilos. Jimmy Orman on board from Barrier 8. He's our friend today, but not being very friendly, completely ignoring us. He's currently paying $5.50 to win and $1.75 for the place. He did win three straight for us at um, Doombin last start, uh, last prep, sorry, and he is first up on Saturday. He has been competitive in all of his five first up runs today. First time to Eagle Farm though. Yeah, it does concern me a little bit. I've kept him away from Eagle Farm. He, he's, he loves those tracks and he's his toe into the ground. But I have been comfortable with how horses have been getting into Eagle Farm of late. I think the surface does suit and any rain around that just makes it they're getting towing a little bit more yep. I think it's a big plus for him I love the makeup of the race for him I love the amount of speed I think every horse bar him and one other could lead if yep. they wanted to so we'll just sit back off that really good speed and there's no days to have a good turn of foot getting home I'm under no illusion as how much tougher this preparation is going to be for him than yep. last he started you know in class threes last time and worked his way up to getting through the open coming this time he's got to start up with those higher rated horses yep. But I've been very pleased with his preparation. He's come along beautifully. I've got quite a long prep in mind for him, okay. particularly getting back to probably a you know a, a natural turf track like a like a Doom or a, or a Sunshine Coast with okay. a bit of rain around, possibly a listed race early in the carnival. So that's the okay. level I think he's at. Yep. It's a good starting point for him Saturday. I love the way the race composed, as I said. Any rain around enhances his chances, but there is a good improvement to come. Okay. We'll move on to race nine now. It is the No Metro Wins Handicap over the 1400 metres. We'll start with Briar's Kingdom. He'll carry 54 kilos with Angela Jones' two kilo claim. He'll jump from barrier nine. He's currently paying $8 to win and $2.70 for the place. Coming off a last start win at Eagle Farm over the 1300 uh, metres about a month ago for Ange. He's got a good record over the 1400 metres and at Eagle Farm, but has a sticky draw. Yeah, he does, but he has got that good track and trip record. He had a nice solid trial at Dooman last week just to be ready for this. I'm really happy with him. I think the draw, I'm not too concerned. He just tend to make his own luck. I think you roll up, find a spot in the first two pairs, two or three pairs, um, and get himself in a position to be able to be in the finish. I, I, I really do think he's found the right race. I kind of like him at double figure odds. I think that's, that's the sort of horse he is. I can't see him being far away here. Okay. Second runner we have is the party girl. She'll carry 54 kilos. Stephanie Thornton rides from barrier uh, 13. She's currently paying $17 to win and $4.60 a place. She was a little bit slow away first up and got too far back but did her best work late through the line over the 1200. 
yeah, she was just bitterly unlucky the other day. She yeah. never really got out, and then Ange went sideways with 100 to go. She ran through the line nicely. Yeah. Um, really good first up run with no harm done to the horse. Just beautiful first up run. Probably not overly keen to run off this wide draw on Saturday at 1400. Big field, Eagle Farm, two weeks between runs. I'm not overly excited by it all. So more than likely leave her to Doom, and she's got she loves a track like Doom when she can get a toe into that ground. And yeah. I, I think I'll leave her there with an option next week. I think she'll possibly run next week. Another one, then a fortnight later at Doom. And so more than likely she won't start. I only have the one runner in that race. Okay. We are into the final furlong of this week's final gallop. Who do you think your best winning chance is at Eagle Farm on Saturday? Well, the very light team in the, yeah. the city area um, this week. I'm going to stick with Tenzing, nice okay. and early. I yep. like the horse. Um, he's found a race with a couple of chances in it, actually. It's, it's a decent little sort of class three, but he's far better than this grade, so I, I kind of like him. Okay, your best each way chance? Best each way chance, I'll go with Bryce in the last. I just think he puts himself in a position to be in the finish. I can't see why he wouldn't be running top three. He's fit, well and healthy, and he likes his track and trip. Okay, you're best at the Provincials over the next few days? Got a really good team at the Provincials. I mean, weather will change a bit, a little bit of this if this rain does come, particularly if you see switch that track will downgrade quite quickly. Yeah. Um, but one I know will handle that sort of, get any given the ground if we get it, is Big Impact. Okay. I think she's an excellent chance fresh up there. But like I must stress to everyone out there, I've got a very good team at the Provincials over um, Friday and Saturday. Not big representation, but I think a very good provincial team. Okay, your best track worker this week? Best track worker this week? That's a tricky one. I'm going to stick with Baller down okay. at Flemington. I'm, I'm thrilled with what I saw of his of the, the, the information that come back off his gallop and all the data and that. I think he's right up to the mark. He's, he's every bit where he was um, in the spring. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick with Baller. And I love the work of Isotope here at Eagle Farm. I know we're going away from horses running or Baller's running this weekend, obviously. But Isotope, I think she's right up to the mark the way she worked Tuesday. Okay, and your performance from the stable for the week? A uh, little pizzazz. Yeah. He was a beauty, yeah, he's a little ripper. He's just, I've got a real soft spot for him, I just quite like him. I remember when we bought him as a yearling at Classic, particularly one of those horses that John does all that work, and he found this, this small to medium sized yearling that had this beautiful action on him, and I loved him from the minute we, we seen him, and he's just been a little ripper, and it's just really good to see him bounce back to winning form after yeah, having absolutely. that prep in the summer that was. I think for everyone involved, it was just that little bit frustrating. Yep, absolutely agree. Okay, it is time for Cav's Corner, which is supported by the Brisbane Airport Hotels Group. No cigar for Cav last week. Let's see what he has in store for us with his multi this week in Cav's Corner. Uh, welcome to Cav's Corner for this week. Uh, this week uh, we'll travel to Ipswich on Friday. We'll go big impact, a win. And then we'll venture to Eagle Farm on Saturday and we'll go Tenzing a win. Good punning, guys. So he's gone big impact a win into Tenzing a win. Copying your homework again. Yeah, I don't think he's copying my homework, but he's pretty... He's copying some he's, Yeah, he's not far off the mark. They're both horses, you know, have prepped up really well. They both work good. Tenzing's work. Tuesday morning, Jimmy Orman rode him. He was like, super happy with him. So they're, they're both in great shape. You know, she, she's quite forward. She won fresh up last time, big yeah, impact too, on a very wet track. She come right around the outside fence. Robbie Fraddle rode, rode her yeah. at, at the Gold Coast that day. So, you know, she did a mountain of work that day. So she, she's very forward and, and fit this preparation as well, two good jump outs and trials. So he's got a pretty good formula there. I must admit last week on his multi, poor Halal. He had the weight of the world yeah. on him. He, he was, obviously didn't deliver, but he was the second leg of a failed Cav multi, okay. so as, as my friend Dan Nolan, who was at the race on Saturday, said. So I think everyone was just loading up because he gets one leg wrong, wrong, the next one's, you know, everyone believes it's over the line. So yep. it was just the pressure Halal didn't need. No, absolutely. The second not. leg of the failed Cav multi. So <laughs> I think he's got a pretty good multi this week. He's, um, he's shot very well. Okay. Now, before we wrap up, uh, just a quick shout out to a supporter of the stable, Dan Leary, who has set up the Punters Community. Um, the website is punterscommunity.com.au. Dean has a great tipping competition on there for anyone to join with the proceeds going to Live In, which is a mental health charity organisation, and it is a great way to support a great charity too. Absolutely, yeah. It's, Live In's a fantastic charity out there, does a bunch of work for mental health, which is so vitally important, never probably been more important than what it is now Absolutely. after everyone being after post-COVID. So yep. there's, a, there's a whole lot going on with them, which is good. And he's got a great a great, um, a great charity there that the funds go towards. So jump on guys, get on that website, have a look at it, get involved. 
and support what is a very good charity. That is punterscommunity.com.au. Anyway, good luck on Saturday at Flemington, Tony. Hopefully, Baller can produce a career best performance for everyone down there. The Baller very rarely lets you down. He very yeah. rarely doesn't run a good race. So, win, lose, or draw, you know, I'm sure Baller will. We'll have us all proud of him again, just like when he was the massive odds, 50, 60 to 1, there in the champion sprint, he's sort of the outsider. The bigger the price, the better he goes, so I wouldn't be jumping off baller for your exotics at all there on Saturday, team. Okay, best of luck to everyone over the whole weekend.